Hello, everybody. It's Seth Leaf here with two of my dear friends, Laura Eisenhower, Jen McCarty from the UK. And it's interesting because we really were going to do something in harmony with our books. We all have books that are either published or about to be. So we're going to have like a three-way conversation about what they mean, what everything, where it's going, how it can help people's lives. But we're deciding that we're just going to have a free flow talk. I'm just going to let go of it, roll with the conversation and bring out the best in each other, however that is. So. Good to be Thank with you. you. Sam. Lovely to be here. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful introduction. Yes. So, Jen, what's been happening? Um, so what's been happening is that um, I've got a book coming out in uh, with Muse Oracle Press, who is the amazing Se Steph Campbell. Um, she's got this in incredible publication house and um, I'm going to be publishing my first book with her, is, which is a little book of Neville Goddard quotes. So basically, I've been really deeply assimilating the teachings of Neville Goddard and um yeah, it's just really, really profoundly upgraded my consciousness. And I've been so like assimilating it on such a deep level. And it's quite complex, his teachings, but I've kind of like created a little book of quotes um, to to deliver his his wisdom in a sort of bite-sized, digestible way. And to also to introduce his absolutely amazing mystical teachings to a new generation of people. I mean, Neville Goddard, it is said that he was the guy, like he's like the, the father of the secret, you know, and a lot of these new thought leaders and stuff like that, like in the thirties and forties, like he was like a big, big deal at that time. And so many people attribute his teachings to the secret and, and, and the reason why the law of attraction um, gained so much traction uh, in the in the last few years. So uh, yeah, I absolutely um, am blown away by Neville's teachings and the 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 way that Steph has put together this book is just so exquisite because she's a graphic designer. So it comes out in May sometime. I don't know the exact date, but I'm really really excited about that. And it's also going to be connected to an oracle deck called the Mystics Imaginarium Oracle Deck, where basically you have these quotes and then the interpretation of the book gives you ways to apply the teachings and, and, and sort of like examples in your life whereby you can apply these teachings to have a deeper understanding and breakthrough with, with your own consciousness. So um, they're the two main projects, book projects that I've got coming up. And the uh, Mystics Imaginarium is going to be published in September and the little book of Neville Goddard quotes is going to be published in um, May so uh, I'm really really excited about that um, yeah so, so Laura what about your book because I met I met this guy the other day yesterday Jody Dean and he said he, he said that he's read your book and he said it was absolutely amazing he said it was brilliant oh like, cool he loves it and I was like I'm gonna tell Laura that <laughs> Yeah, that was looking around just to show it. That's why I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's What's so book called? What'd you say? What's it called? Awakening Through Frequency. Ooh, Awakening Through Frequency. Yeah, well, it's just really about just what is truth and living our truth, being true to yourself. Just be true to yourself because we are dealing with so much inhumanity. Uh, everything about gosh, what we are waking up to in this world um, has a lot to do with just the social engineering, the indoctrination, the manipulation of the planetary grid network, the different dark technologies that have been utilized for thousands of years to, you know, compromise us into like a human form that, you know, may be not really like who we really are. So what is going on there? And like, what does our DNA really hold? Like the junk DNA and, uh, you know, this whole kind of awakening and moving through just all the just different levels of gatekeepers and frequency fences that are, you know, standing in the way of us reclaiming, you know, the divine blueprint of the Christ Sophia and just how that relates to this planet and um, organic ascension uh, and a lot about my great grandfather's administration and what took place during that time and how um, the timelines 
uh, really started to move in the direction of, you know, the sort of apocalyptic sort of Armageddon kind of new world order pandemic kind of stuff, alternative three and like all the things that have you guys, I, I can't like really put it into like full expression. It's just, there's You're so- You're doing amazingly, Laura. You're doing amazingly. Like I'm totally getting it. What is okay, this? good. Yeah, no, it's yeah, just yeah, totally, well, totally. Like, you know, the, the timeline, you know, stuff going on. Uh, it's just like, wow. You know, that was such a huge time in history where yeah. we would really begin to understand um you know, this, this world of media indoctrination and social engineering versus, you know, this awakening and understanding, um, you know, who we really are and what our galactic history has been and so much that has been kept from us that we- Can I ask a question? And that no, brings us no. into this time of like ascension and disclosure, yeah. right? Yeah. How do you receive your information is it is it downloads or is it like teachers and mentors or is it a mixture of everything? It's definitely a mixture of everything. Yeah. As a child, it was like downloads. It was always downloads and synchronicities and just things, yeah. you know, coming along the way and showing me like, you know, this piece and here's that piece, you know, just when you have that curiosity and you're like a seeker, you you tend to manifest the things that will you know, give you pieces of the puzzle or pieces of information that you were like seeking out. Um, just meeting a lot of people along the way uh, through synchronicities, you know? Yeah. And um, researching and downloads and piecing it all together. Um, I kind of compiled the book based in, you know, all of that, my personal journey, what came through to me and what I researched and learned that was in resonance to the things that were coming through as a child. And um, with the Mars recruitment, a lot of the researchers and whistleblowers, you know, and their information, you know, helped me to connect dots and like understand like a much, much bigger picture of, of like what I was, um, tuning into, which was the reason I didn't want to go. And it explains, you know, that whole journey of, uh, being confronted with that. Yeah. And, and, and like, what is all that? And so, whoa, the rabbit holes of secret space programs and Project Pegasus and all this other stuff, like it just opened up this enormity of information. So I wasn't in any projects or programs. It was just, there was a, just this attention on me um, before I was born. Wow. Yeah. Uh, to divert me, um, to go off planet which connects to the alternative force scenario, which connects to all these uh, different levels of the secret space programs. And um, Eisenhower was actually told that a descendant would come into the family to bring about, you know, tr uh, truth that he kind of passing the baton on uh, yeah. that, that a family member would come in to, you know, continue this mission <laughs> and um you look at last technology they 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 sort of intercepted it and tried to kind of like redirect it and um so refusing to go would mean that i would stay here and like on earth <laughs> and call out all these dark technologies and all these manipulations and um what what ascension is all about which is like what what we need to recognize in this world all the psychological operations and attacks upon humanity so that you know we can like heal and come together and like just remove ourselves from this inverted system that um 
is compromising our true divine genetic code and, you know, experience something beautiful with this like mother earth and what the Sophianic story and the corrections is all about with the planetary grid network and the Venus transits and, you know, just like all these events after it's 26,000 year cycle that, um, you know, is giving us an opportunity to, you know, move into a, you know, a future where we're not slaves, like in this, is, yeah, in this like dependency bond with this inverted like matrix, right? And a lot of us are already like free of that and over it, but we're trying to assist, you, you know, others and humanity. And that's, you know, what the work is all about. And that's what we're doing. And we all, all of us here, you both have this in common with your books and what you're doing. So. Well, you know, it's funny because Jen, when you're talking about Neville Goddard, mm -hmm. when I was incarcerated, I spent three years in prison and somebody sent me a book from him and I didn't oh, wow. know who sent it. I never found out who sent it. But it came in and they gave it to me. And I was like, going through it. I'm like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So you said that. I haven't even thought about that until you just brought it up. Oh, really? Know. Oh, wow. But oh, also, he's, Laura, he's like, the oh, sorry, go ahead, Jen. No, I was just going to say, I think he's the world's greatest mystic. I really believe that. More people would love to know about his work for sure. Yeah. So if you guys write it down, it's worth it. And Absolutely. so you said even before all the modern, kind of even way before the whole 1960s hippie movement around the world, they were doing yeah. way before that. Yeah, they were. Like Florence Scovel Shin. Have you ever heard of her? Florence Scovel Shin. She's another one. She's like a powerhouse of enlightenment at that time. It was like the 20s and the 30s in New York, basically. And yeah. there was Joseph Murphy as well. He's just, they're just so brilliant. And they're so deeply at one with their God consciousness. They're just transmitting from that place. And it's just so clear, their teachings. Well, but you know what, too? So kind of like what you were just saying, Laura, you know, with the book, it's here, by the way. I bought a copy of it. My roommate just cannot put it down. He's just like totally into it. <laughs> but it's interesting because as you're saying that it's like all the things all the obstacles all the barriers like everything that every one of us faces to whatever degree we're ready or not that is the initiation right the way we face what we don't want to face that shows at the level we can grow but the oh look at that <laughs> who is she this is Archie Bear. Archie Bear. He's just, oh, look at that boy. But the thing is, it is intense and it is really, it's everything, right? But at the same time, at the end of the day, we all have so much more in common. There is a miracle happening to every single one of us. This life force in our body, way smarter than we are. Mm. it's in everybody it's in everything and so kind mm. of like the joke that the humor in it is people don't know it and it's like how could yeah. you not know it because you wouldn't even be here if it didn't want you to right and so i feel like a lot of this comes down to chosen frequency right the truth frequency mm -hmm. truth is pretty simple when it's like okay there's a heart this is miraculous form of energy animating it causing all these systems in our body to work together and that's what's really going on right and our sense of self is an extension of that and so truth right it's just almost anybody could yeah it makes sense it's true and so when enough of us do this personally and we start doing it more collectively then that truth frequency gets amplified and all the things that, you know, we're talking about and so many others, like the connection with the planet, with the world, all of it, that's already there. Just all these other like belief systems and layers and piles of illusory lies for the most part, or 
to keep a slave race and working. There's nothing holding us back except for ourselves. And when we get in tune with this energy, it mm -hmm. burns off that stuff. And we're like, oh, my God, it was always mm -hmm. like this. We have it already yet. Anyway, I didn't I just felt like I had to say that. Yeah, well said, Seth. Absolutely. So what about your book? Well, my book was something I never even planned on publishing. The Fight to Enlight. Oh, that's a good name. It was a hand. Basically, I was writing it when I was in prison just to like make sense how I got there. You know, yeah. I just couldn't do it. And so I was writing all this stuff out, just looking for patterns in my life. And then I finally, a bunch of people saw me writing it and they wanted to read it. And over time, people were like, you have to put that out. And so I did. Yeah. And yeah, it's, but we're all that, you know, it's almost like coming from this place where you know the power of life and the connection and creativity that we get when we attune ourselves to it. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. you know? and we're here to help usher that in because it's really all that's going on I mean what we could do is that we could promote our books like I could promote your two books to my email list and we could actually just do one post I've got about 11,000 people on my email list and I could just recommend like both your books like individually and maybe we could all do that to recommend each other's books and that would really be very supportive wouldn't it and we could just add a few like little testimonies and stuff like that and um and yeah, we'll, we'll reach like a whole brand new um, community of people probably. So I would be totally open to doing that um, for both of you. Oh, sweet. So yeah? sweet. thank you, Jen. I'm, yeah. I want to cry. <laughs> Are you guys up for that as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Amazing. Well, let's do it. And we'll really, really support each other to get this these beautiful vibrations out into the collective yeah. 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 Talking about the journey, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's just wild looking at what this next generation and the children are facing in the world today and how many parents I talk to that are just trying to figure out like how to navigate, you know, all of this. It's really important, you know, material that I think will help them. Um, you know, process, you know, the enormity of what's coming up inside of them and, mm -hmm. and knowing that there are better choices to make than what the indoctrinated school systems and medical industry is yeah. encouraging them to do. It's like, it's a really critical time. It's, I just talked to my son and, you know, you, you have, we all have children, right? Uh, all three of us it's just, yeah. we, we, when we see the world that we're in today and it's like we really need to get this information out so that uh you know we protect the minds of uh you know our children who are born with like really important purposes and missions that we need to listen to and be able to understand um and i know so many people are build building you know healing centers and educational yeah. centers and you know helping you know to like move people away from all of that you know you know there's always powerful starseed missions coming in and like every assault or attack you know comes with a generation of souls that know exactly what to do to you know overcome but uh you know there's a lot of rehabilitation and a lot of redirecting and guiding you know people out of like the madness of like you know what's happening with gender confusion and just the racial you know stuff and globalism climate change and to to where people are like attaching themselves to things that uh you know the the, the psychological weaponry and spiritual warfare you know is just really playing on people's good intent and um and it's hopefully people can just kind of like step back and just be very very careful um, because what's coming at us as far as the problems in the world and how they 
bring about the solutions is that's not coming from mother earth. That's not coming from source. That's not coming from our soul. That's, that's like coming from, you know, something that like you can really disconnect you from, you know, your truth, your deeper soul journey. And that's sacred and needs to be like acknowledged and um, paid attention to so that, you know, you just don't, you know, consent. It's hard when we don't know, right? When we were I kids, mean, it just seems so normal, right? But now, like, even when we were kids, like, you know, I still, I was outside a lot. I knew nature was really the most important thing to me. But now through all the digital stuff, like, yeah, I agree. Like, we're navigating very different times and it's happening really quick, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I did I Ching, I did Tarot, and I learned astrology and I, you know, just to help me just with the stuff that we were being thrown. And and I look at this generation and it's just like next level crazy, right? So, you know. I yeah, just... I mean, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that. Like I spend a lot of my time helping traumatized adults and actually wouldn't it be better to actually work with the children to actually stop, you know, do our little part to actually work with the children to prevent that trauma or to give them the tools to be able to navigate that trauma and resolve that trauma um, at, at a very, very young age. I, I'm sort of like going, oh, the logic, it's sort of pointing to that really ultimately, isn't it? It's like, I'm it's like we're constantly dealing with these, um, you know, these systems, these like, uh, you know, these trauma systems in, in adults and, and it's very, very intense. So yeah, I'd like to, uh, myself, I, I would like to at some point kind of like navigate away from that and more focused on on working with children. I think, I think it's really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. Even families, I mean, right? Like. Yeah, families. Yeah, so true. Like, yeah, that was such a good idea. Like families, like mothers and fathers and children. Yeah. Give them all the tools. Yeah, the growth happens organically. Family retreats. That could be a really good thing. A family um, retreat. That's like, no one does that. It's like a brand new thing. You know, like retreats for families and you come and you learn skills about how to resolve your trauma, how to hold space for each other, how to love, how to love yourself, how to regulate your nervous system, nutrition, yoga, meditation, all of it, you know. Growing like food and herbs and working with. Yeah. And, yeah. And the animals and just being just, yeah. I'm yeah. really, um, you know, so many projects and so much like it's happening, you know, and things are moving in that direction for sure. I mean, yeah. Just... Are you coming to England this year, Laura? What'd you say? Are you coming to England this year? Yes. I'm going to be there in August for Shine Seminars and then Glastonbury at the end of September. How long are you in England for? Well, probably a week or more in early August and then end of September. Oh, and so you're coming twice? You go back and forth? Right. Yeah. Okay. If all cool. works out well, yeah, I'll be coming twice. Okay, cool. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's just uh, wild with just the eclipse and Pluto moving into Aquarius and this like new birthing of energy. Uh, has that happened? A That's happened. Pluto has officially gone into Aquarius. Yeah. Really? And it'll be in Aquarius for 20 years. And um, Jupiter, Uranus, conjunction, and Taurus is just like really blasting a lot of powerful um, acceleration codes from source to like really light up that higher self. And if we don't allow it in, it can really like be hard on the nervous system and cause a lot of anxiety and stress. It's just... You know, so we want to allow that in and also be fluid with, uh, you know, Saturn and Pisces and Neptune and Pisces that are working its way into Aries and just, you know, the Saturn, you know, which holds structure and Neptune, which is all about the multidimensional and, and you know, it's a water element and the unseen realms, the spiritual, the mystical, the creative imagination, you know, it's like everything from outside of us wants to infect it with something that will anchor itself into a reality that becomes a timeline. Right. So mm -hmm. 
all the power of suggestion that comes from news and, you know, things that suck us in, which is, you know, the parasitic inverted matrix way of, you know, producing, you know, a timeline we wouldn't want. Um, it's very important that we take that Saturn energy and we turn it into a boundary because Saturn is like authority, mm. tyrannical authority, dark Saturn controller, or, mm. you know, Saturn being an obstacle and a challenge that you're going to overcome that then becomes the boundary that, that then becomes the structure for yourself to then hold a container for your, you know, uh, own disciplines that you decide for yourself that work for you and help you to thrive, you know? So, you know, Saturn is a grounded energy that on its highest level is self mastery and being a teacher. But when it's inverted, it's it's tyrannical control and authority. And this is what you have to do in consent, right? So we're breaking that and like getting um, in touch with how our creative imagination working with Saturn is. How can we envision and imagine the future that we want and make it a reality? Uh, and then with the Jupiter Taurus breaking down what we thought was our self-esteem, self-worth, you know, and abundance connected to an inverted system and redefining it on our own terms and realizing, uh, you know, the authenticity and truth of who we are and what we came here to do on a mission level, you know, is where we can begin to unite with Uranus connected to the higher mind, unity, consciousness and community and, you know, the expansiveness of Jupiter grounded in Taurus and earth sign, you know, that like with the Pluto Aquarius, like birthing this whole day, it's like, it's all in the astrological alignments and every single event has this inverted psi up version out there. And, uh, and I just see like, you know, this bridge between the two sort of bifurcating timelines, they're still connected, but you know, um, yeah, what are you guys' thoughts? <laughs> well, you're the astrologer. I mean, you're you're like kind of the expert, aren't you? It's all just like I'm just absorbing what you're saying, really. I mean, I'm quite fascinated by Pluto in Aquarius and, and what are the implications and what does that even mean? What does that mean, Pluto's in Aquarius? Well, it's I think it's just going through that death process, like letting go of the old paradigm. This this oh, right. the, the things that you attach yourself to, the identities that you thought you were, right? So mm -hmm. it's just sort of like dying because Pluto was in Capricorn, you know, like Capricorn, just sort of like the careers, the jobs, the just the societal things, right? It's like death of Pluto and like Aquarius is like Uranus. Like, who am I? Like, what is my truth? Like, it's ex Uranus is connected to the rebels, those that are eccentric, you know, those that are revolutionary, um, those that are just uh radical just just being true to themselves you know but there's dangerous levels of it right that we see you know and and really you know good ways of expressing it um sometimes uh you know this, the darker side of uranus can be dark technology like transhumanism or you know um like this would AI. be a utopian world if we go in that direction you know so we see like where this time you know can take us into an inverted expression of it but the key is like with this eclipse is uh the aries energy with chiron and aries sun moon venus retrograde mercury all in aries it's it's really about like the wounded ego warrior identity like needing to look at that and stand our ground and pay attention to like what is it we need to heal and what medicine can we provide to others that worked for us that we know you know and 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 can can our ego or warrior spirit you know provide you know leadership that is healing um and 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 be that you know action in the world that is is looking to find you know solutions or the dark inverted part of that energy would be let's stay in divide and conquer and war and be victimized you know with the chiron mars which would be the wounded ego that is being leveraged by all these different tactics to you know push it into you know something it doesn't need to be so 
that's the thing with astrological alignments. There, it's always a growth period and representing something that is helping us to move forward. But because of their knowledge of the occult and these events, they they throw us a version of it that takes us down a road that um, makes it a lot more difficult. You know, so the axis of uh, the nodes and the eclipses um, are extremely important. And then we're moving into, uh, yeah. Sorry. What is the North Node? So the North Node right now is Aries. And what is it? Like, how, how do you measure the North Node in a chart? How do you measure it? Like, it's not, it's not, is it a celestial body? No, it's, it's, it's on the um, ecliptic, like, like when the, the symbolism is like, this the Ouroboros, the serpent biting his tail. It's like your your greater soul journey. Like you you go into the North Node, you come in with the South Node, right? It it shows what you're bringing in from the past, mm -hmm. and the North Node is the direction that your soul wants to take you in order order to integrate into the like polarity of it. Because okay. integrating polarity is what is going to begin to light up our dormant DNA. So the nodal energies help us to integrate the opposite in order to have the experience of something that, so like a South node Libra right now, right? All about relationships, um, balance, harmony, justice, peace, and um, was shadow side of Libra, you know, maybe uh, codependency. It's all about like others instead of yourself right yeah. so to integrate the aries would be standing your ground and being you know strong and true to yourself but can you do that and still be in a relationship so you want to integrate the north node with the south node so it's just like that karmic leap of every nodal like axis has you know this integration with its opposite in order to bring it full circle like if you're going to be a libra are you in the relationship just to serve that partner, just to give, you know, just to please that partner and make it all about the relationship? Or are you going to also carry that strong Aries energy where you stand your ground and you're still sovereign within that connection so that you can experience that soulmate, you know, twin flame. So you talk about that. You've written books about that. So, mm -hmm. you know, and you really write brilliantly so much about um, what these times are all about. You are yeah. right. So, you know, you're tuned in, whether you know the astrology or not, you know, yeah. it's all about that work of, um, with this nodal axis of the Libra Aries, you know, how to heal the wounded masculine and the relationship world and the, just the warrior energy. And just, we just been in this healing of just so much, right? So. Gosh fascinating yeah i mean yeah i think we're moving into the new age and um i wonder how it's all going to kind of you know kind of like the, the dominoes are up in the air it's like how, how is it all going to fall like like are, are we seeing the the collapse of society like is this what is going on like what evidence do we have that that our society is collapsing like for example in england like you have to pay this tax called council tax and like, I have to pay like £3,000 a year council tax to live in my house. That's like $4,000, just like that, just to live in my house, okay? Now, you pay all this money to the councils, but they don't do anything. Like, the roads in England are a state. Like, there's just like pothole after pothole after pothole. And that is what that is what the money's meant to go for. But the money's clearly not going to, to fix the roads. So it's like... So to me, it just seems like there's corruption and like this kind of like this tax system is kind of imploding because it just feels to me like it's corrupt. Like I wouldn't be surprised if all this money is not going to some offshore bank account in Dubai. Do you know what I mean? With these like councillors and stuff like that. And um, so I'm just wondering if if that is happening, like, you know, that, that we've got this facade of like everything's normal, but actually it's it's all the system is so rotten. It's just dying. Like, do, do we think that? What do we think? What do you reckon, Seth? Yeah, Seth. 
So yeah. I mean, we know that what we focus on, we get, right? Yeah. All of us. And the ones who don't really realize that, they're still doing it. So you have all these people around who are just focusing the bulk of their conscious awareness on who they think they are, why we're here, because the news tells us this, the social indoctrination teaches other stuff. So when we're focusing on that all the time, it's being amplified. And so for society to change, like we got to really choose like a new reprioritization of values. Like we value relationship, we value our relationship to life, to each other, to the world. So I think, I mean, it's so clear, like to me, it's dying, it feels like this old system's dying and all the traumatized adults that you were talking about, Jen, like the, people are beginning to break down too because everything that so many of us thought was real isn't. And so then what is real is something that it's, seems like it's hard for people to embrace a new quantum leap forward or a new paradigm in the old state of being that contributed to these decaying societies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon, Laura? Yeah, I'm just right there with you guys. Yep. There's so many different levels of it all because we don't all experience it the same way but you know it's wild uh i mean england it, it, it's really an interesting place because it's such a small little island and it's all very very compact you can kind of see quite clearly that the the new world order agenda like in america because it's so massive and it's so vast and there's it's kind of a bit like the wild wild west in, in in many ways do you know what i mean it's not like that here it's like a lockdown grid so um it's quite fascinating and just noticing because as a traveler i travel all around the world and then you just notice the energy when you come back to england even though it's very sacred and it's very 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 beautiful and it's very very powerful and magical absolutely there's this kind of like this gray oppressive grid that is kind of like locked in and it's mainly through um tax taxation and just the cost of living in the uk at the moment is just incredible i mean i know it is also in america um there are some places where like grocery shopping is just like off the scale um and it's like that here like you go to the supermarket it's like two pounds for eggs you go to the supermarket now oh, it's two pound fifty for eggs the next week it's three pounds for eggs next week it's three pound fifty for eggs next week it's four pounds for eggs in four weeks this uh, is what they're yeah. doing Please. like Sick, basic like commodities of life they're just like hiking up the prices and then today they've just released that the tech so that the um what's his name the tesco uh ceo have has got like uh, like two billion profits this year two billion profits in this year and it was like 900 million last year so like this, this is an unsustainable system that they just keep hiking up the prices. So what I'm saying is it's like there must be something must be imploding. Like we are getting to this crux point. And also with the taxation in England, like if I go to Brighton and I park my car just on the street, I park my car. It costs me five pounds for one hour. That is that's about seven fifty eight dollars for one hour's parking. Shit. Like, come on. It so, never used to be that. It used to be like two pounds, one pound fifty, and now they've changed it to five pounds all over Brighton. So this is this is crazy what is going on in England and the way that we're taxed for absolutely you're taxed for breathing. Just for each breath is like you've got to pay them like five P or something. Oh okay. um, yeah, you can't even really collect rainwater too. Yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah. It's just like what is going on? Like I love this country and I want to stay here, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's squeezing me out. Like you go to Morocco and you go to all these like cool places and it's like, they it just doesn't have that grid. You know, everything's really cheap. Like it's kind of like the wild, wild west, you know? So I don't know. This, this is unsustainable. This is unsustainable what's happening, certainly in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Well, people are really just, uh, a lot of people and hopefully more people, you know, will begin to just look 
in a different direction and begin to work together and pool resources together to just like get out of it all and and then protect those areas right so mm -hmm. that nobody can come in and you know take it away it's just yeah it's, it's, it's really we're duking it out it's like a major showdown of forces right now showdown we're in the showdown time guys this is no. it get your popcorn <laughs> yeah 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 gosh who knows how this year it's gonna unfold and what are your thoughts about all that jen and seth like the election and stuff you know well, I... what, yeah sorry, we don't even have to go there we don't even have to go there well, did, you know the Simpsons when they pull the head off. Like, what's that about? <laughs> I've seen that in this country. Oh no! I'm... In your country, there is this meme about the Simpsons where they say election twenty twenty four, and they have this guy that pulls off these masks, and the two reptiles oh, are standing yeah, I didn't get... on the <laughs> like podium, and the Simpsons get it all right. They do get it right, so. Is it going to be revealed that Joe Biden wasn't really Joe Biden? I don't know. Oh, gosh. You know, how, the way I always look at that stuff is like, what is voting, right? We're voting for national officials every few years, but those who have money are voting with it daily. But everybody alive is voting, you could say, with their attention. Just yeah, paying attention to the true. same thing over and over and over. And so that become normalized you know yeah. if you're living here like you can you can go up in the woods and disappear if you have the right supplies you know but you go into society and like a lot of the food here has those forever chemicals it's insane it's everywhere it's in the air it's in the water it's in the soil so <laughs> <laughs> how is that sustainable right Got our fur babies. Ah, Luna. Oh my god, your cat's so cute. Oh. I know who's that. Luna. <laughs> Luna Archie Bear. Oh, I want to show you Venus. Venus is sitting there. Venus. Right. Luna and Venus. So, guys, should we share like our upcoming offerings? So, what what's happening, Laura? What are you what what what's going on for you, like offering wise? Oh, well, I am trying to rebuild my platform uh, website wise. Um, so that's going to probably take off in early January of next year. But in the meantime, my website uh, is the same. Um, I have uh, a lot of events coming up. New Living Expo in San Rafael, California. April 19th to 21st and Disclosure Fest in June in California. Um, yeah, I mean, I could just like name off all the events. You can just like check Go out. Go for it. No, just let us know. I mean, what about the ones that you're really inspired about? All of them. Oh, yeah. They're going to be all awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah. really excited about the Summer Solstice and Full Moon um, Disclosure Fest at, uh, yeah, and just going to, back to England, Glastonbury, Portal to Ascension, and Shine Seminars. And and I, I just got to update my website, though, so that everybody knows, you know, where I'm at and where these events are. And, yeah, and my book and my offerings are just continuing to work with people in their chart and, you know, really, like, just freeing ourselves, de-weaponizing the weapons through, you know, the power of our mind and consciousness and just ability to, you know, recognize and be mindful of, you know, where these things show up. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, we just aren't energetically corded into any of it. And, you know, everybody has it within them to know how to do this, but just, you know, just wanting to um, assist in whatever way I can, you know, and bring people together because it can feel kind of lonely sometimes. And um, do you ever so run retreats? I, I, I want to, and I'm mm -hmm. working on those kind of ideas and maybe you and I can talk about that. Yeah. Maybe we should all run one together. I know. Wouldn't that be amazing? That'd be so cool. Yeah. I'm up for it. We can use our little chat box. Laura is, um, you know, your book, is it self-published or is it available in bookshops and stuff like that? Olson is my publisher. Everybody knows Brad Olson. So 
yeah. and get it on Amazon. And I'm going to be ordering, you know, a, a, a lot of books and I can uh, sell them through my website as well. But yeah, it's just like, got a lot of stuff in there. I'm glad, you know, the feedback has been good. Um, yeah. But what about you guys? What, 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 what's going on in your worlds as far as what you're offering? What about you, Seth? I'm actually, I just got my new website up and I'm giving three copies of my book away. Oh, wow. Gosh. Oh, I, oh, that's amazing. I can sign, pay the shipping for sign, but if somebody doesn't want to pay shipping, they'll get the downloadable link. Wow. So, that's yeah. Very kind of you, Seth. What, what, what's inspired you to do that? You know what? Like the world, I think the state of the world. And, you know, Laura and I talk a lot about everything that's happening and it's like, it's starting to become clear to everybody who's paying attention that it's time to shift what we're focusing our attention on. And, you know, my book really, it's just, it was my own therapy, but it's, it's how the human spirit can bounce back from anything. Yeah. Because for me, everything that went into just that book, like my life went into, it. but I was free after that's what was so incredible when i got it out of me and on paper i didn't identify with that anymore so it's kind of like what you were saying laura we're like we're going through death and rebirth all at the same time here and if people aren't having that experience then when it does happen it'll snap you know it's like wake up or get out kind of energy yeah I, mean, it's, ah. I want to inspire people like I want people to know that no matter what they're going through they can take the victim glasses off and begin to really be in harmony with this divine or this energetic aspect of all of us that we all have that we all share that is the same stuff that is the cradle and grave of the universes of bacteria like we are that miracle we are that creative impulse and when we focus on it more we just start to love it more and we realize every breath is such a gift so powerful so yes that's what i'm doing that's beautiful that reminded me of um kind of teachings that I'm sharing at the moment around twin flame separation and um, the gift of physical separation with your twin flame. And um, so much of that is because we get to focus on the spiritual connection. You know, we get to focus on the eternal bond that we have with our divine other. And we really get to become one with our spiritual selves to know that we're never in separation. We're always in that divine marriage and and that knowledge and that awareness is is like our spiritual bank account that we are like filling up so that when we leave this realm we're going to have the tools to be able to navigate the next realm you know so yeah what, what you were saying just really reminded me of those pertinent teachings um around the gift of separation and in fact i might even write a book about the gift of separation um because i think it's really really important and I know for myself, like it has, it has been a gift that has just kept on giving because I get to really, really experience who I truly am and how powerful and resilient and connected my soul is to God consciousness. And maybe there might be distractions if there was another person. Maybe I might be throwing myself under the bus and prioritizing that other person's needs. Who knows? But I'm just not getting that option because because this because of this gift that is being given to me. So, yeah, I really felt what you were saying. So the things that are coming up for me. So today is a very cosmic day. It's the 14th of April, which is the 144 code day. And I have created a meditation, which many, many people in my community are doing. And it is connected to the numerology of 144, particularly 144,000. And so I brought through this very powerful meditation that enables you to connect with your pineal gland. And also within the spinal column, there's these 144,000 nadis, which are kind of like hair strands, which are connected. So as they come online, as we do the work to with our pineal gland and bring this energy online, this is what activates the crystalline light body. So we're obviously we're we're transforming from a carbon-based third dimensional body to a fifth dimensional crystalline body. 
So I've bought through this really, really powerful meditation for today that is specifically working with the anchoring and act activation of the light body through the 144,000 nadis. So that's very, that's something, one thing I'm offering, which is today, it'd be good if we could like add that little link because it's a very pertinent day to do this work. Um, the other thing I'm offering is my Avalon retreat, which is, I've only got one spot left on the Avalon retreat. And that is to do grid work between Egypt and Avalon. Um, it has come to my attention that there is a very dark curse that has been um, kind of like existing within the grid of Egypt. And it's to do with the feminine. It's to do with the divine feminine and and her being very, very suppressed and controlled. And I, I got this vision of this kind of like this giant goddess, like in this dungeon, like basically gagged and just like locked up. And so I, I, I it is my understanding that this is the curse. It's to do with the, the divine feminine the shakti force and so um and 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 apparently this this curse has been activated in the line the ley line the dragon line between avalon and egypt so a lot of my work this year is around really deeply clearing that curse and so i'm going to egypt in a few days obviously to start doing the work and then I'll, I'll be hosting my Avalon retreat which is going to be grid work on on the sacred sites of Avalon um working really really deeply to anchor this this very very pure energy and because all the work that I do is supported to the twin flame union trajectory so there, there's been a lot of curses and a lot of distortions on the timelines that have affected the Heros Gamos unification timeline and so my mission is to clear those curses and clear those um you know those parasitic attacks and inversions and all of it so that we can get that energy that sacred energy like super flowing again which is going to support in the next wave of twin flame unions so i'm completely orientated on this mission to support the 144,000 and their twin flame unions so that's my avalon retreat but there's only one spot left so probably won't probably won't get to that <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah like maybe i am thinking about coming to sedona and maybe we could think about collaborating and doing something um all together in sedona that would be amazing um if we put our diaries together and just see if we can find um a good date um and oh and i've written my book lingam worship which i think is what the book that seth wanted to talk about because it's so freaking exciting this title is called lingam worship um and it's basically about the journey that I had in India I've just come back from India and I had this experience of a minor sexual violation and through that experience I met and encountered the energy of Lord Shiva and he told me that I had to have that experience for me to meet and ultimately embody Shiva's energy so through that experience I learned very very much what Shiva is who he represents and, and I was shown that Shiva represents the energy of the godhead that is willing to to face the, the the darkest elements of duality so that is where we meet shiva we meet shiva on the on the war in the war zones like on the on the path of combat do you know what i mean so um through that i did a lot of work with the shiva lingam and i connected with the shiva lingam and then i received a very very powerful download about the divine masculine's relationship with his holy phallus and what that is what that represents seth's read the first few chapters of the book i've had the most amazing reviews for this book um so really it's an ode um of devotion to the divine masculine and it's based on the premise that the biblical teachings tell us that uh, Adam was born first. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I reject that notion that Adam was born first. But then when I had this experience in Chena, in um, Arunachala, I was shown that from the spiritual realms, the spiritual realms is the, the, the divine feminine and the physical world is the divine masculine. And it is the divine masculine soul that was brave enough to leave the spiritual realms and incarnate in the physical realm. So he incarnated first within the twin flame coupling. And as he it, as he incarnated, he interfaced with all of the war codes, with all of the separation codes, and he took the hit for the divine feminine. So that when she incarnated, she her she it was she basically experienced the softening of the blow of the um the the you know the the experiment of duality. 
So the book is a 30,000 word explanation, sharing about that, <laughs> basically. And it, I'm very, very, very proud of it. And it is, it is a beautiful, deep, sacred offering that is going out into the world. And it is really just so dignifying for the divine masculine. And I'm so fascinated to hear how, how this information lands with the divine masculine. Like, do you relate to that? Um, so yeah, that's my Lingam Worship book. I'm super excited about that, uh, but it's going to take a, a year to to come out. So yeah, oh, brilliant! It's amazing. So yeah, that's it. That's all my offerings. Yeah, awesome, you guys. Yay! Wow. Yeah, let's um, do this. Is great. I love doing this with you guys. Definitely, definitely. It's been amazing, and. I look yeah, we'll do it again when we're all feeling like super refreshed and like feeling yeah, good. Yeah, sorry, I'm not at my best right now. Oh, it's okay, I'm darling. It's quite nice for me as well. I'm quite, it's, you know, I've had a bit of a day. I've had a headache all day and it's just like, oh. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. It's been hard just to just kind of like, Mwah. yeah. So just, but it's all good. And um, just moving through it and that's what it is. And the thing is, any kind of just, adversity that you know comes our way is just an opportunity to you know break through break free and override so and that's the way it always goes um Absolutely. and that's how we reclaim you know these uh dormant strands and and awaken this divine blueprint and you know really heal and and when we're willing to move the things out of our lives that stand in the way uh you know, so much miracle and beauty and magic awaits us, you know, just being true to ourselves and our soul and our intuition and really listening and feeling it and, and expressing it so that, you know, we just don't mask it or deny it or keep ourselves in an addiction spiral or, you know, something that, you know, just doesn't look at it. I mean, this is all about self-discovery and self-knowledge to break the tree of knowledge to restore the tree of life. <laughs> and get out of that duality of good and evil. And um, yeah, it's all about the inner work and you do so much incredible work, both of you. I love you both so much. I appreciate you so much. And it's always wonderful to be with you and we'll do this again for sure. And meet up. Yeah, so we'll post all our links, won't we, on this video? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll post, uh, you know, so let's all send each other your links for your books and everything like that. And um, and this is going to be really, really exciting, just putting out this message to all of our communities. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Okay. Much love you okay. guys. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, great. Um, Yeah, I'll send you all the links in our little group chat then. Okay. Oh. Sounds good. Okay, well, thank you. It's amazing to be with you. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.